And I would surely like to ask him what is zero gravity about his name. He's representing Dream Team, and he'll talk more about gaming zone and blockchain. Alexander. Thank you. Okay. Is it working? Working. Yeah, that's fine. So my name is Alexander Kahanovsky. I got 17 years of experience in the esports market. I built Navi. That's one of the most popular and one of the most successful esports team on the planet. As well as last year, I became a shareholder of ES Force. That's the third biggest esports entity with a 100 million dollars of investments in last round. So before I start speaking, please raise your hands who know what esports means. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this presentation will provide you with a guideline. You, uh, what is esports? Yeah, in a few words, it's whenever people are playing computer games professional, uh, competitively. Yeah, so they're competing in com in computer games, and. Um, this presentation will tell you how the blockchain and smart contracts can disrupt, respectively, esports and gaming industry, how they can change them once and for all. So, how, um, in few words, yeah, gaming industry has been growing rapidly. It was like a $100 million industry maybe 25 years ago, yeah. But right now, it's $100 billion industry with 2.3 billion players. And what is the most important thing? That's Games has been evolving. You, you, uh, who has been playing computer games back in the days, 90s? I don't know, 90s, just computer games, yeah. Um, games were simple, and you've been playing against PC, yeah. But the most, the most major leap, the most major step, the first step uh, in the game development industry uh, was taken whenever you can compete basically with human beings. Yeah, you can participate in an event, and you can compete in different games from strategy games to FPS to any other games. And imagine that 1.4 billion accounts are registered just in top 10 most uh, popular competitive titles, such as Counter-Strike, Dota 2, League of Legends, Overwatch, Crossfire, etc. Yeah, so how it all started, how those competitions taking place? That's how it started, in gaming clubs, yeah? I've been sitting over there also, starting my, I was uh, back in the days, late 90s, uh, semi-professional player in StarCraft. And then uh, I'm appeared as a professional player in Counter-Strike, early 2000. Um, and who remembers this? Like, ball mouse. <laughs> That's the thing you need to use to play, yeah? And usually, whenever something bad happening, you're just like, open this one, removing the ball. You see this, this is the alien life form inside of it already. Yeah, so like scratch it down, then pack in the ball, and then you're starting to play again. And that's that's uh, that's how it was. That's that's the mouse was the ultimate weapon for any kind of gamer early two thousand. Um that's the World Cyber Games two thousand four in San Francisco. That's event I've been participating as a professional player with my team in Counter Strike. Um we can say that that's, that's the first wave of development of the competitive gaming of esports in general. Whenever people, um, and it was basically because of the development of the internet and online gaming, yeah, so you don't need to connect your modem anymore. You have a cable connection through the internet so people can play and compete with each other online. And that's how esports looks right now. Hundreds of thousands of people are attending huge events all around the planet every, every year. Hundreds of millions are watching online. And uh, those kind of event was, you know, even over here in, uh, in Dubai a couple of years ago. Yeah, and Dubai right now is kind of making a very good and like leap in terms of esports and gaming in general for the past couple of years. Um, and so, Imagine that like, all those people are just watching professional players compete for an like, enormous amount of money. And I will exp show you how, how big the prize money are. Uh, and the, basically, you could compare esports with the, as a, any kind of sports ecosystem. There are professional players, professional teams, um, sponsors, yeah, tournament organizers, and basically game developers who are making the games. Yeah, that's, that's how ecosystem looks like. So let's go move forward to the stats. Um, first of all, the audience this year will reach almost 400 million people all around the planet. Um, if you if you can see this, there is 100, uh, 130 million was the audience just five years ago. So it's a three times growth. For the viewership, major 
esports events like Dota 2 International, it's like one of the biggest events with the biggest prize pool in the history of the esports, with 25 million just for one event. And the League of Legends World Final, uh, just overwhelming traditional sports such as NBA Finals or Stanley Cup Finals. The second one, prize money. This year in esports will be more than 100 million dollar paid in the prize money. I think 100 million, 110 or even 20. And uh, the friend of mine, the um, ex-player of my team, Kuroki, uh, his real name is Kuro Salehe Takasome, he already won 2.3 million uh, just in the pure prize money in this year. It's excluding his salary. The average salary of the pro gamer right now is $300,000 a, a year. Yeah, and the core, the really top-notch pro gamer can earn from 700,000 to 1 million a year easily. The major sports club, the major sports club are buying professional teams or creating their own. This is just a few examples. Yeah, so you can see this: the football clubs, NBA clubs, and um, major clubs of NFL are already owning stakes in almost every top teams in Europe or US. Yeah, so this is like a global trend, and they are buying out, they're cheapening like almost every month. You can see a new deal or a new sports club is opening division for the esports. So you would say, Alex, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Why are you standing here? Why are you telling us all this stuff? And but esports, as majority of us, are also facing critical issues, yeah, which has never been fixed. And those issues are coming out from um, two different angles, yeah. So first one, let's compare football with League of Legends. Football, most popular sports. League of Legends, most popular esports. In football, 300 million players. In League of Legends, 250 million. So pretty, pretty same amount. In League of Legends, all around the planet, there were 100 clubs, roughly. Do you know how many clubs in football? Guess. How many clubs in football? Any number? Any guess? 10,000 more. S how much? 30? More. Come on. How many clubs? 100,000 more. <laughs> 300,000, that's correct. Imagine this gap. Why this gap is still over? It, there is something wrong yeah, over here. You cannot basically, um, it's something sh should be like completely different, yeah? And the main problem over here that's managing and create, cr managing, creating esports team or any kind of gaming team is just pain in the ass. Like imagine 18, 21, 24 year old guys or, girl, uh, guys or girls who want to create an esports club or a gaming team, yeah? Gaming club, whatever. They need to go open, uh, create legal entity, open bank account, hire lawyer, hire accountant, uh, issue invoices, try to sign contract with players, try to find sponsors and sign contract with sponsors. They're just not possible to do. A um, couple of weeks ago, a few friends of mine, they got kids already and they're like uh, 15, 17 years old, two brothers, and they want to kick in eSports club. And they're saying, Alex, what do you need to do? And like basically, I, I am explaining all this stuff, what you need to do. Keep, and that's, that's the, basically, we connected in the WhatsApp, and that's the message they sent me, yeah? <laughs> so that's the thing I received immediately whenever I were explaining, they like just kids say, hey, this is the process. So this is the first issue, yeah, and the first issue that everybody knows in esports, and that's that's the core. The second one, let's compare sports with esports, but from a different angle, from a money-wise, yeah. Esports, 400 million dollars in revenue for media rights and sponsorships. Yeah, so all teams, tournaments combined are getting those money a year. Sports, 90 billion. So it's it's huge difference once again. And the problem not even in audience size or its age. Yeah, it's for a audience is much younger. The problem is average revenue producer ARPU is much lower. It's one dollar comparing to eighteen. So once again, why the difference is so huge? Um, Esports is booming market. It will become a biggest sports of the future. Yeah, in ten years, fifteen years, basically Tencent investing five billion dollars right now in esports for upcoming five years. Um, it, the highest evaluation of esports team that you can buy, like for example, the biggest brand in esports, will cost you 200 million dollars to acquire. 200 million dollars for esports team. But m this market, it's fairly new, and it's 
mm, insecured, highly fractured, and unstructured. Yeah? And those two issues kind of, I was all my life, I was 17 years of in esports. I was from amateur player to semi professional to professional to team captain, coach, manager, finally CEO of the professional team. I've been thinking how I can resolve it, yeah, how, how I can get it done. And basically, utilizing all my knowledge, all my hundreds of years of experience, yeah, I've been starting to think that, hey, there should be a solution, there should be something, yeah, so how we can basically together help the industry to grow. And we came up with idea with a dream team. So dream team is infrastructure project for esports and gaming ecosystem. Basically, we are solving a problem of 300 million players who wants to build, grow, manage, and monetize their teams on the one hand. And with unlocking of blockchain and smart contact technologies, we have unique opportunity to build one of a kind play, uh, payment gateway for players, teams, tournaments, and sponsors. So how are we going to do it? Yeah, how, how is it going to look? First of all, we're saying that the Dream Team is an all-in-one solution for people who want to build, grow, manage, and monetize their teams. So on the one hand, that's a team building platform, ultimate team building platform. You can, uh, to build your team, first of all, you need to find proper teammates, manager, analyst, coach, practice games leads, or tournaments leads. That's something we already have, on, uh, that's something we're adding on the platform. We have a um, machine uh, learning ranking and, and then artificial intelligence. So in esports, there is no transparent path, yeah, from novice to amateur into professional. And uh, that's the path we are providing. We are basically building and um, using our machine learning right now, we can predict how good players, imagine like we have a ranking from one to 10. One, he just installed the game and 10, he is a professional player. We are getting API from any game. Yeah, it's basically publicly open. And we can predict right now how good player is, like his number, uh, his like ranking number four, six, or eight. But in a 1.5 or two years, whenever we have enough data, yeah, whenever we, can, whenever we can collect enough data, we can basically predict small Lionel Messi or Michael Jordan right away. He's just entering his profile and we're saying, hey, buddy, you can spend 18 months playing and there is a 95% chance that you will become a professional player. Then we are providing a comprehensive tools for team management, scouting, coaching, analytics, media marketing, and finances. So all these things in one place. You need, you have, you will spend like as maximum. It's free. More majority of those functions are free, but the highest stake you will spend ninety dollars a month, nineteen, and um, ten five minutes to set up. Yeah, but the most important part kicks in with the monetization, and that's so. Using blockchain and smart contact technologies, we can finally unite players, teams, tournaments, and sponsors on one platform. So in few words, we are trying to do the same thing back in the days when, whenever PayPal did with e-commerce. We are trying to do kind of a PayPal, a payment gateway for esports. Yeah? As, I, as I explained, like on esports market, what, what kind of issues do we have? Yeah? So when, whenever I was a professional player or whenever I was CEO of professional team, same time, we are going on events and we never get paid. Just never. Like tournaments organizers, um, like I'm sending the emails, guys, when, whenever we can receive the money, and there's like no, re no response at all. And it's like, it's like hundreds of thousands of prize money, yeah? Basically, that never been paid to a lot of teams and players on professional level. Um, uh, imagine what happened on amateur. Um, sometimes, whenever a team got paid, the team owner is not paying to their players. They should, he's just tricking their players. And whenever, if you are sponsor, sometimes you are sponsoring the teams, and they just heavily undeliver. And you cannot predict, you cannot understand how good they are, what team will deliver, and what team cannot. So. We are issuing a token on our platform, yeah, we call it Dream Team token, which will be our internal currency. And we can basically move it as a, as a core payment option. Yeah, so like imagine right now if you're team participating on an event, um, smart contact starts immediately. Uh, one minute after tournaments end, team is receiving their prize money. One minute more after team receives the prize money, they're leaving their small cut, and majority of the revenue is coming to the players. Two minutes and everybody gets paid. Usually, right now, average delay in professional esports for paying out prize money is three and a half months. It's an average. Yeah, sometimes it's six or eight months. So, tokens on the platform can be used for 
paying out salaries and bonuses to our players, sponsorship payouts, media right sales, transfer market. We are selling players for two, three, five hundred thousand dollars each. Yes, trading players with other professional teams or selling or buying. There is no marketplace. You can know how you can identify where where is the good players, where is the bad players when there are contract ends. That's where we're also resolving. Pay out the prize money or have a round of funding. That's easy, that's what you can do basically on our platform. Um, that's a sm that's a basically a small thing, the extra. Yes, yeah, so whenever tokens cannot only be used for a smart contracts, but they can be used for a premium features. Yeah, you can buy premium accounts or boosters. And um, we have, um, people can request, uh, basically purchase also big data because we will basically accumulate an enormous amount of big data. And um, right now we are providing all the big data for any kind of university or college for free in the world. Yes, yeah, so any, well, everybody can talk, just like write, write a me a letter. You will have my contacts over there in the last slide. And you can basically, we can provide you with data. We're already working with University College of London to analyze our data. And a um, few words about our advisors. Yes, so we had one of the most, most powerful advisory boards in any gaming or crypto ICO. Yes, so like we get uh, people from financial, fintech, financial investments background, as well as most powerful personalities um, in esports, yeah, in gaming. It's not the full list, you can check the full list on the website. It's because it's updating almost a couple, couple of days and we are just like rolling out dollar advisory board one after another. Um, our partners are including uh, professional teams, Navi and SK. It's not it's on the list, but it's on already on the website. Uh, pro biggest tournament organizer, yeah, called ESL. Is also one of the biggest tournament organizers called Starladder. Xola, that's the payment gateway, and basically they will list our tokens so people can pay um, uh, using our Doom token already in uh, skin in different games. Pretty big one, and like for example on Twitch TV, that's the biggest live broadcasting platform. Um, this is our traction. Yeah, so we, our platform is live. Just MVP is live for 30 days. We we'll attract 42,000 users, and we are going to attract 100,000 more in December, and we will become a most fast-growing esports or gaming product ever built. Um, our average growth rate is 61%, and 20% of the people, right now a little bit less already, coming from US. Yeah. So, um, our token sale, basically, will start in, pre-sale will start in seven hours, and will last for four days, and the main token sale will start from 11th of December till 14th of December. That's the first phase, the small one, and the big one will be in February. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, we have a time for one question before we go to the lunch. <laughs> Let people eat. Yeah, there are no questions. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, we have the serial questioner. Hi, uh, thank you for the information. So I want to ask you one thing. You said that you are building a platform, a payment gateway for uh, to connect esports with the traditional uh, market, right? So uh, I want to ask, uh, would this payment gateway be open for public cryptos as well, or will it be using your dream team token only? So as for now, we are planning for sure only make it like as our internal currency on the platform. Yes, yeah, so like we want to connect everybody for esports yeah that's our main goal main integrity on the long run for sure we are planning to kind of provide this gateway as a third party api yeah and using um using shapeshift for example people can exchange our token and use this tech gateway for other cryptocurrencies whenever for other platform that's a based on the crypto whenever they want all right thank you very much alex thank you